How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. It's your old pal, Baba Ganesh, here once again. So, with only four days left to go until I get on the bus down to Georgia, I figured now would be the perfect time to put out my videos to give you guys a better look as to what kind of gear, what kind of equipment I'm going to be carrying on my through hike itself. Now, one of the biggest things through hikers have to consider is their footwear. You have to take care of your feet. What that means is choosing the right footwear that you think is going to work well for you, your own comfort level, uh, the kind of weather that you're going to be experiencing, so on and so forth. Now, before I get into uh, the footwear that I'm going to be carrying myself, I want to say that the best footwear that you think is for your through hike is what you feel is comfortable for you. Everybody has their own personal comfort level. Everybody has their own goals in mind as far as how many miles, how much weight they want to carry, so on and so forth. So if you feel that big, heavy boots with heavy ankle support, waterproof capabilities are right for you, go ahead and do that. If you feel that lightweight trail runners that are not waterproof, lightweight, breathable with more limited ankle support because you feel more confident, go ahead, do that as well. Whatever you feel is comfortable for you is the right way to go. That being said, settle on in. Let's go ahead and talk about all the details surrounding the type of footwear that I will be carrying on my upcoming Appalachian Trail through hike. So, okay, guys, like I said, in today's video, we're going to talk about the uh, footwear that I'm going to be carrying on my through hike. Uh, I'm going to be talking about what I feel comfortable with, the accessories, extra socks, so on and so forth that I'm going to be carrying, and my overall strategy going into choosing my footwear. So, of course, when choosing my footwear, weather was a huge consideration. My toes do have a tendency to get cold very quickly. So, of course, that was something that I wanted to caution against wanted to take in consideration when choosing the proper footwear for me. Now that goes a few different ways. The kind of shoes that I'm going to be carrying, the kind of socks that I'm going to hike in, as well as the kind of socks that I'm going to have at camp. Now after first considering going with a more waterproof boot in the beginning, taking those on some uh, shakedown hikes and such things, um, after the way they just performed for me, the, with the way they kind of just beat my feet up a little bit, uh, I just felt that wasn't the right direction for me to go in. So I am opting to go with something more comfortable for me personally, as opposed to something that is going to give me more ankle support and waterproof. So I will be hiking in the Ultra Lone Peak 3.5. Ultra has been really kind of taking over the market in regards to trail runners, especially in regards to through hikers. The toe box shape uh, just really allows for your foot to stay nice and relaxed, kind of stretch all the tendons, ligaments, all the muscles inside your feet. So especially for people who are covering such a long distance and things, uh, it just helps take care of your feet better. Uh, I do feel like I get more endurance out of my feet. Uh, they're going to end up being stronger, just be more comfortable overall. Now certainly these are not waterproof, but they are very, very breathable. Now certainly you could be sitting there saying, of course, you know, they're going to absorb water. Sure, that's something to take into consideration, especially going through the Smokies, hiking through snow and other such things. You know what, if we see snow in the forecast, if we have to, have to hike through it, so be it. You know, we'll be looking to possibly get to a town, get to a motel, hotel, hostel, whatever the case may be, so we can get someplace warm, dry, and safe. But that's something that we can keep an eye out for. That's something we can plan around, so on and so forth. For the most of the time, I'd rather have my feet stay comfortable. I can always dry these things out a little bit quicker than if they were Gore-Tex, something waterproof to where they held the water in for a longer period of time. So Ultra Lone Peak 3.5, really popular hiking shoe amongst through hikers, just really, really comfortable overall. They're getting more and more popular by the year. So this is what I will be hiking in. Now my normal shoe size is a size 11. I will be starting with a size 11 and a half. That's the most comfortable for me, especially dealing with foot swell uh, while I am hiking. Now because my feet do have high arches, I am taking consideration that my feet will grow uh, along my through hike and so therefore I need to have an additional size, maybe not a size an 11, 11 and a half, uh, but something a little bit larger in fact. So I did get a second pair of Ultra Lone Peak 3.5 in a size 12. Again, expecting my feet to grow a little bit along the trail. I do have high arches. They will flatten out over time. When that's going to happen, I don't know. So at least it leaves me with some options here. Now, certainly if my feet don't grow early as I expect it to be, 
Um, I can just purchase another pair of 11 and a half until I grow out of those. But if they decide to grow a little bit earlier than expecting, at least I have a pair of 12s waiting for me that I can get mailed down ASAP. So that was kind of my strategy going into everything. I know people say, oh, don't buy a whole lot of pair of shoes. Your feet are going to grow. You're going to have to get new ones, so on and so forth. So that's why I'm at least starting with the 11 and a half. That's all I'm comfortable with to start with. I have size 12s ready to go as my feet expand. I can either buy 11 and a half if they don't grow quick enough. I can move on to the 12s, so on and so forth from there. Again, leaves me with some more options. Now to go along with those shoes, obviously you have to wear socks when you're going out there, otherwise you tear your feet apart. What I'm choosing with, something that I've covered in some of my previous videos, are my darn tough socks. I love these things, they last forever, I love the lifetime warranty, they're just super comfortable. I know the preferred sock is the Injinji Toe Socks for going with Altras, but I've tried those, they're just not comfortable for me, they kind of bunch up a little bit. And so therefore, I'm sticking with something that is tried and true, something that I have confidence in, the darn tough quarter-length ankle socks. Now, over the last year, year and a half, I've kind of gotten away from using sock liners. I haven't had any problems with blisters whatsoever. I figured I can just keep nice and breathable, just go with the hiking socks all by themselves. However, on a recent backpacking trip, knowing there was going to be a little bit of rain, knowing that um, you know, with that rain, these will soak through a little bit quicker because of that, I decided to wear the sock liners underneath. My feet stayed nice and dry the entire time. They felt just a little bit more comfortable overall, really. And so therefore, I decided to go uh, with the sock liners in addition to the regular hiking socks. I probably really don't need to go with them, but again, I just feel my feet feel a little bit more comfortable overall. It adds an extra layer of breathability, so especially with a little bit of rain kind of thing, it helps keep my feet and my socks overall a little bit drier than they otherwise would be. So these are the Cool Mesh 2. These are the double layered socks. I love these. They are super comfortable. They're lightweight. They're breathable. That double layered as well really, really helps uh, prevent any kind of friction. So especially for hiking some longer days, 20, 25, 30 miles, keeping my feet a little bit drier, a little bit more comfortable, just eases my mind a little bit. It goes a long, long way, um, especially for those long days while on the trail. Now I will be bringing a second pair of hiking socks. I will be bringing the same exact ones, just in a different color. Uh, so that way I can make sure that I, you know, I'm wearing them accordingly. I will be bringing a second pair of liners just again to have a second pair in case things get soaking wet, so on and so forth. So keep it nice and simple, keep it nice and lightweight, but still keep myself nice and comfortable. And then moving on to camp socks. Obviously when you get to camp, you're not moving anymore, you're not keeping yourself warm, especially you're going through the Smokies where you are going to have some cold nights. So it's important to you know throw on those layers, keep your whole body warm, and that includes keeping your feet warm and keeping them dry. So to start off with, I do have the REI Merino Wool Liners. Merino Wool means that they'll still clean for really, really long as well. Uh, very easy to clean out, very easy to dry out, so on and so forth. Merino Wool is also very, very comfortable, very well insulated. Doubling up on top of this, I do have a pair of the Merino Wool Trekker Weight Wool Socks. They're pretty nice and thick. They're not the thickest socks that they do offer. Um, just in regards to keeping the weight down, but still keeping some, keeping my toes nice and warm, obviously. So doubling these up has worked really, really well. Now it's also nice about going with this combination right here. If I decide to bring some toe warmers with me, um, I can throw the liners on, put the toe warmers on and then put these over top and it just kind of traps in that heat there and also keeps that toe warmer off my bare skin, uh, which is what they do recommend. But this system right here has performed very beautifully thus far for me. Um, and so therefore, I will be going with this combination out on my through bike. And last but not least, gaiters. Yes, I will be bringing gaiters with me. For those of you who have been following my channel for a while, who have been watching my videos, have probably seen that I like to wear gaiters as often as I possibly can. Regarding the weather, uh, rain, snow, if it's sunshine as well, they are just fantastic. Now, I didn't have to purchase Dirty Girl Gators. I've had my own for a while now. Uh, they are really nice and lightweight. They are trail running gators, so they're just a lightweight, stretchy neoprene. You know, what I love about them is they have the Velcro across the front, so especially if I have to tighten up my shoes, 
um, especially just putting my gear on in the morning. I don't have to worry about putting these on first before putting my shoes on. So especially if I'm kind of groggy, I tighten my shoes and all of a sudden realize I forgot to put the uh, gaiters on. At least I still have that option. They have the hook in the front there, of course. Uh, I did add a string underneath just to hold it in place, especially going through some snow where it might push it up a little bit and try to take it off my shoe. Really comes in handy. And what I did do as well is I did spray these down with a little bit of waterproof waterproofing spray. Um, just a good way to just shed the water a little bit, especially snow and things like that. Just shed the snow so they don't soak through. I don't expect it to last very long. Beyond that, they're really just going to be there to keep the dirt and debris out of my shoes. Once the snow melts and everything, even if these strings do wear out and break off, um, as long as I don't have anything trying to push up, these do hold themselves in place uh, without any issue whatsoever. But going through the Smokies just with the snow, I do want to make sure they stay in place. So I did put that string on. I like how they have the little grommets in there uh, allowing me to do so. These are really nice and lightweight. I think they're like 1.2 ounces combined. So incredibly lightweight, breathable, stretchy. Gets the job done for me. So yeah, that's about it, guys. That's what you got. That's what I got for you here today. Um, this is the kind of footwear that I will be carrying on my through hike. I'm really looking forward to it. Obviously, I've had a lot of experience with these shoes. I put on quite a few miles. The tread is still there. It's doing very, very well. I at least have another three to four hundred miles at the least on these things. Maybe stretch it out to five hundred miles. Who knows? Before I have to switch over to a new pair. But these are very comfortable. I'm very happy with my decision. So if you guys are watching this I, and you're planning your own through hike, I hope this helped you guys out a little bit, answer some of your own questions as to what footwear you should go with, uh, looking into my mindset as to why I chose the Outras as well, just with the lightweight capabilities, the breathability, and just the overall comfort. Um, I'd rather keep my feet comfortable. If they do get wet, I can always dry them out. Worst things have happened. So thank you guys so much for watching another great video. Don't forget to subscribe down below to keep up to date with all my videos, especially my upcoming Appalachian Trail through hike. Don't forget to check all the links in the description, uh, my truck blog, my Instagram page, most importantly. Hit that like button, hit that share button, leave me a comment or a question down below. I always do appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Baba Ganoush, out.